Hey guys, in this video, I'll be going over the solution to the problem chain contestant from at quarter beginner contest 215. So this is a pretty nice DP problem. Uh, let me go ahead and explain the problem statement first. So we're basically given a string of the first 10 letters of the English alphabet. So from, so it has characters from A to J. And we're given a string, so let me just take a random string. And we have to count something. And that is the number of sequences, but number of subsequences. So we have to maintain the same order in which each character of the same type is placed consecutively. And by that, I mean that if we, if we take this A, then for, if we want to place some other, and we want to use some other A in the sequence, then we have to skip all elements in between. So we'll have to skip this B if we want to place this A, but it's up to us whether we want to use another A or not. We have to count sub sequences. And two sub sequences are said to be different if we par um, if we use one character at a certain position in one and we don't in another. So they've basically worded this as contests. So if we participate in a certain contest in one and if we don't in another, then those two sequences are said to be different. And we basically have to find the number of valid um, sequences of contests we can participate in. So It's a pretty good idea to look at constraints in such problems because they can either be ma um, mathy where you'll have to use some counting principles and come up with an answer or it'll be dynamic programming. And constraints are a pretty big hint for dynamic programming because you can see that we have n less than equal to 1000 and this special condition that we only have characters from A through J and problem setters don't put constraints like these for just any reason. Usually when they limit the size of the alphabet like this, it, it implies that we can store the characters we've already seen in the prefix. And we can do that using bit masks. So I'll just use make a bit mask of 10, 10 bits, where the ith bit will be set if the ith character from the starting of the English alphabet has been used in the prefix. So basically every bit in this represents whether we've used a character or not. So this would be like this. And from right to left, because we're talking about binary here. So this problem does require some bit masking knowledge. Um, I'm not going to explain the fundamentals of bit masking here. So this is more like if you know how bit masks work i'll go i'm going to go ahead and explain the solution but if you want to know about bit masks and how they work in general then i'll leave a link to a tutorial down in the description right so now we can represent all combinations of these numbers um through numbers in the range 0 to to the power 10 minus 1 so basically, if we've taken, if you're using some certain character, then that'll be set to one. So like if we used G and D, then they'll be set to one in our bit mask. And so this is a dynamic programming problem. What can our states be? So it's usually a good idea to think about solving for a certain prefix. And another thing that's good to think about is what, what, each contest contributes to the answer. So if we definitely participate in the ith contest, what does it contribute to the answer and how can we calculate it? And let me take up a small string, ABA. And I think there's six ways to participate in contests. Right, we can't, a, A, A is, A, B, A is invalid because these two A's aren't consecutive. 
So there are a total of six ways. Now, how do we solve this? So I'm, I'm going to maintain this array count character and mask. It basically store the number of ways to to have a sequence of contests such that the contests end at character ch and we use all the contests that are represented by this mask. Basically, if suppose we have a over here, then the mask for that would look like this. And initially when we're at the first index count of zero of two to the power one, because that's a one will be equal to one. And then what we want to do is I think this will be easier to explain through code, right? So I'll just, I've just taken input and a string and I've converted each character to lowercase so that it's easier to work with the string. Okay. Now I'm iterating from zero to N minus one. A bit is basically the position of this element in our bit mask and CH is basically the position of this, um, well, the character converted into an integer. Now we want to iterate over all bit masks, which have this bit set in it, because we're going to count the contribution of this contest to our answer. So we definitely have to participate in this contest. And that's what this check basically does. Okay. Now the number of ways to participate in this contest, if the last contest we participated in, was of the same type is basically the number is basically what counts ch of mask stores because we all we've already decided which contest we we want to count for by this mask and if we participated in this contest at the um as the last character in our string then that this bit should be set in that mask as well so we can just simply add count of ch comma mask to our answer. And now if we want to definitely participate in this contest, but participate in a different type of contest before this, we know that that we, we can't have used this type of contest before, because that would mean that they are, they aren't consecutive. Um, like that ABA case we just had, if we've already used a while we are at a over here, but we want to use B, we can't do that because that's just an invalid move. So we look at, so if we want to participate in a different type, we first of all, look at what all contests are set in our bit mask for every contest that is there in our bit mask. If we participate in a contest of that type last, how many ways are there to do that? Which is basically given by count of J and mask XOR bit and XOR will basically turn, will basically remove this current contest from that bit mask. Because like I just said, we can't have participated in a contest of this type. If we participate in a contest of a different type, um, as the last contest. So, right. So we just add that to ways and ways is counting the number of ways the number of sequences such that we participate in this contest. After that, we just want to add the number of ways to participate in this contest to the count array, which is basically a DP array. And we want to add the total number of ways, the contribution of this contest to our answer. And this is just, if we decide to participate in just this contest alone, like a single contest, then we need to take care of that separately because um, these cases don't cover it. And then we print the answer. So yeah, briefly, the idea is count the contribution of each contest if you definitely participate in it. 
and if you participate in a contest then the last contest you participate in can either be a contest of the same type or it can be a contest of a different type now if it's a, if it's a contest of the same type then we take the same bit mask we have in which the bit for the current contest is set because we participate in the contest of the same type as the last contest and we add that to the total number of ways we can and if we choose a contest of a different type we know that in the prefix we couldn't have chosen this contest so we need a bit mask where the bit of this contest is not set and we again add that to the total number of ways then we increment the number of ways to um, do that for this character and mask and we increment our total answer so right that was it uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.